Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information and this is part two of our three part series regarding shimmy and other vibrations you can get on the big BMWs and this episode is all about fitting non-OEM or replica alloys to the car. The problem with these wheels is they invariably have a 74.2 centre bore in them and that's not suitable for most of the BMW range. In fact, the E31, E32, E38 and other models all have a 72.6 nose on the hub. And if you fit a 74.2 alloy, it's going to cause problems. But rather than just blurbing all the way through it, let's take off one of my front wheels and have a look what the problem is. Right, so wheel off and here's the hub on my 840Ci. And as you can see, I've got a 10 millimeter spacer on there and it's a hub centric spacer. It does two things. It spaces the wheel 10 millimeters further away from the hub and also it increases the nose size uh, because replica wheels and these Rondal 58s that I've got fitted on my car have 74.1 or 74.2 millimeter bores and that's too big for well most BMWs which is 72.6 so this spacer increases the hub diameter this part across here from 72.6 to 74.2 I think it's about 74.1 it's not a perfectly tight fit which is why I use Captain around here to increase the diameter slightly to make sure it's a perfectly tight fit so as we said it's doing two things spacing the wheel away from the hub by 10 millimeters um, get more of the wheel and tire showing from the side of the car and also increasing the nose size to fit exactly onto the bore of these rundle 58 wheels now the other thing you have to worry about when fitting spacers is the et which is the offset of the alloy now if you chopped an alloy right down the middle that would be the mounting face to the hub with an offset of zero. Now positive offsets mean that the mating surface is further towards the outside of the, the alloy and when you fit the alloy it moves further in towards the centre of the car and the reason it does this is that it has to have the weight of the alloy or the weight of the car between the two front wheel bearings. So you've got an outer and an inner wheel bearing. And so the center line of the wheel must sit in between those two points. If it sits outside of the outer wheel bearing, then you're no longer supporting the wheel correctly. And you can start having problems with it moving around and causing shimmy and vibrations, which no balancing or anything will ever get rid of. So it's always important to have the center line of the wheel between the two wheel bearings. Now, alloys have, them, have marked on them what the offset is normally, and it says ET in a number, and mine says ET13 on this front wheel. This means that the mating surface of the alloy is 13 millimeters towards the outside of the car. And if I fitted that without a spacer, then the centre line would be 13 millimetres away from the front wheel bearing, in between the two wheel bearings, perfectly centred and perfectly supported. Now, adding a 10 millimetre spacer means that that wheel is now 10 millimetres further outwards, and I've now got an offset of 3 millimetres, which is just enough because the 840 has an ET of somewhere between 5 and 15 and so a couple of millimetres not going to make much of a difference. So but that's very important that if you start fitting huge spacers then you're going to move the centre line of the wheel away from the wheel bearing and that not only causes all sorts of vibrations but it gives excessive wear to the outer wheel bearing as well because it's fully supported on the outer wheel, wheel bearing rather than between the two of them. Okay, so that's it. one of the important things about spacers. You have to ensure that you keep within the ET as specified on the car. And these ET values, the offset values, they're all on my wheel and tyres page 
and I'll slowly scroll them up the screen um, in a minute so you can actually see what the offsets are but of course they're on meek net as usual let's have a look at the things we discussed yesterday so here's the hub with its brake disc and so on and it's supported onto the axle which is connected to the suspension system by two conical bearings or tapered bearings that's the outer bearing and that's the inner bearing and this is the line in between the bearings and you can understand if a wheel was its center line of the wheel was between those two then that perfectly supports the wheel in fact as long as you keep within the wheel bearing area somewhere between here and here then that the wheel is nicely supported and there's much less chance of you getting shimmy now I fitted a 10 millimeter spacer um, to do two things first of all this dimension here across here is 72.6 uh, mil as normal on BMWs apart from the E39 and M5 and because the Rundle 58 alloys have a 74.1 or 2 bore in it we had to increase and the other thing I wanted to do is of course space the wheels out slightly so we fitted a spacer here the nose increased the size the face of the bore so that's now 74.1 or 74.2 millimeters and of course we space the alloy out now the alloy that I'm using Rondel 58 has a 13 millimeter offset which means that if we sort of chop a tire down let's have a look at the alloy here's the center line the actual mounting face of the alloy which is here is 13 millimeters in that direction from the center so that distance is 13 millimeters and that would then place the alloy its mating faces here 13 millimeters in and we're perfectly over the two wheel bearings uh, so all the weight is supported by the two and with an extra 10 millimeters further out we end up with a three millimeter offset because this is 10 millimeters so our offset because we've added 10 millimeters here or at the face is now three millimeters and this means I'm right on the edge of this outer wheel bearing but I'm still between the wheel bearings and that supports the wheel properly now if you fitted a huge spacer to get your wheel sticking right out of the side of the car so we fit a a 25 millimeter spacer with its nose on it and all the rest of it and then you can see if I fitted a 13 millimeter offset alloy like the Rundle 58 we now end up with a negative offset which means we're out of the area of the two wheel bearings and now the whole weight of the car is supported outside of the wheel bearing gives damage to this outer wheel bearing well increases the wear on the outer wheel bearing but it also causes shimmy and the reason for that is is when the alloy is supported between the two wheel bearings or in the area of the wheel bearings then you can imagine the force of the the weight of the car is actually pushing up in this direction and the weight is shared by the two wheel bearings and there's no movement left or right when you get further outside so we have a negative offset then all the weight is supported here and there's instead of the force action being upwards or downwards then the force action is actually in a rotational direction and that then allows any small amount of play in either of these bearings allows the wheel to move around like that which is then obviously causes dynamic imbalance of the wheel and tire combination and can cause shimmy so two things that it does excessive out uh, wear on the outer bearing and can cause shimmy let's finish off this session here's a replica m par that i fitted to my first e31 so much cheaper than real ones i think they're 400 quid for all of them if i remember rightly with some ghastly tires on them 
um, but they're not exactly like Empire's. Slightly different finish. Back of the spokes were flat instead of concave like they are on real ones. And a few other bits and bobs. And they caused awful shimmy. Um, one of the reasons was the fact that, of course, they're 74.2 millimetre bore. And they gave me these lovely plastic spacers to space them out. And uh, they were rubbish. Because, of course, as soon as you put the alloy onto the hub, the weight of the alloy and tyre just crushes them it just doesn't do them any good at all and of course then the wheel is eccentric to the hub and I've got awful shimmy and I've got awful vibration at the back which you could see through the rear view mirror um, everything went out of focus so uh, it's absolutely useless next plan fit these hawk spacers uh, metal spacers and much closely machined uh, so more likely to fit that made a big difference still not perfect so I went with my final plan which was to actually get them to fit quite tightly and so on the rear wheels I used a couple of turns of captain tape which is polyamide tape that's available all over the place very tough stuff can't compress it a couple of wraps of that fit the spacer over and then put a couple more wraps over that as well and then refit the alloy back ones absolutely perfect and the front I used an SP86 spacer again and I used uh, shims cut it down with scissors stuck it on with captain which increased the diameter so it perfectly fitted inside the alloy it really was a tight fit pulled it back out again and did the same on the hub so I put a, a captain on the hub until it was a perfect fit and that got rid of all shimmy altogether so much better idea so it really does show the importance of getting the centre bore correct and as we said earlier get the offset correct the offset on the replica MPARS was 25 millimeters so it definitely needed a 10 millimeter spacer on the front for the E31 back ones were fine uh, rear wheels on the E31 are quite acceptable to put a 25 millimeter offset alloy on them so that's fine so there we go uh, that's about it for shimmy this section uh, happy new year thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and in the final one we'll go through vibrations and wobbles which aren't shimmy and is caused by other problems thanks very much for watching i'll see you next time